Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another great episode of Bahrain Now, your source of local initiatives, happenings, talents, and trends. I'm your host, Khalid Hijris, here to walk you through our exciting lineup of segments and personalities from around Bahrain. So don't go away, we'll be right back. As part of the constant achievements accomplished by Bahraini youth in the field of space sciences, the space engineer Yaqub al Ghassab won the International Astronautical Federation's Emerging Space Leaders Award, which was granted to him at the 74th International Astronautical Congress held in Azerbaijan, Baku. And to talk more about that, we are pleased to be joined here in the studio by space engineer Yaqub al Ghassab himself. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, I mean, first of all, congratulations on this because this is a massive achievement. You're the first Bahraini winning this international award. How do you feel about this achievement? So, first of all, I would like to thank the Board of Directors of the National Space Science Agency and a special thanks to His Excellency, the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication, Mr. Mohammed bin Thamar al Kabi, for his continuous support. Also, I would like to thank His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed al Asiri the Chief Executive Officer of the National Space Science Agency for giving us the trust and support needed to innovate in the space field. Also, if you'll allow me, I would like to thank all my family members, friends for giving me the emotional and mental support needed to win this award. As for my feeling, when I knew that I won this award, it was a moment of proud, especially the moment when I stood up in the awarding ceremony stage and rose the Bahraini flag for the first time as the first Bahraini winning this award. Uh, this moment actually shows that the Bahraini youth can compete in the international stages. Uh, they are not far from space science, they can innovate in the space science and they can lead the space sector as well. I think that was very beautifully said and it's always great to see how much support there is to Bahrainis hoping to follow in footsteps similar to your own. And what can you tell us about the IAF Emerging Space Leaders Award? So the IAF Emerging Space Leader Award is presented by the International Astronautical Federation and it is presented to the youth from 18 to 35 years old and they usually select 30 individuals to win this award each year and the selection criteria is based on their academic qualification, their published scientific research and their contribution to the local community. Hence, I won this award as I hold a master's degree in mechanical engineering with a space system concentration from Khalifa University in the United Arab Emirates. Also, I, I have managed to publish 15 research papers related to the space science field. Also, I contribute to my local community by uh, organizing or conducting public awareness sessions to a variety of society levels to show the importance of space science. Also, I publish scientific articles and I organize international hackathons. And the last one that we did was Space Apps 2023. Uh, it was held in the Kingdom of Bahrain with a huge success with more than 500 participants in Bahrain. Brilliant, those are some very impressive credentials. And now, moving on, what can you tell us about the National Space Science Agency's unlimited support and trust in the Bahraini youth? So the average age of the employees in the National Space Science Agency is 31 years old. And because of that low average age, we have managed to win the IAF 3G Award in 2022. So the IAF 3G Award stands for Generation, Gender and Geography. So not only the National Space Science Agency supports youth, it also empowers women. As 65% of the employees in the National Space Science Agency are women, and it is the highest percentage of women contribution in any space agency in the world, as per the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs. Brilliant, I mean, it's always great to see how many people are being actively encouraged and represented in this amazing field, exploring the final frontier. And on that note, I also want to ask you a little bit about, like, what can you tell us about Bahraini youth's contribution to the space sector? So in the National Space Science Agency, we have two main teams. The first team is the satellite building team, and the second one is the space images and data analysis team. And the members of both teams are youth. So the first team, they are focusing on building satellites and space payloads for the benefit of Bahrain. They are currently working on Al-Mundar satellite, which is the first fully Bahraini satellite to be built in Bahrain and by Bahrain youth. The satellite will carry four payloads, all, or all in-house developed in the National Space Science Agency without any foreign support from any foreign company or foreign entity. 
and this is a huge. The second team is the Space Images and Data Analysis team. The team is working to respond to the national needs and requirements by conducting analysis on space images and data. And the team have, in the last two years, they have managed to complete 61 study that respond to the national needs and requirements. So not only to respond to the national needs, also these studies are focusing on enhancing Bahrain's position and responding to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And they also contribute in achieving Bahrain's Vision 2040. And it just seems with everything that's going on, Bahrain's got its eyes rightfully so to the stars. And, you know, continuing on that, I, I feel like a lot of younger people, particularly children or people in school, like they're going to be looking at, you know, what Bahrain's doing with the space sector and hope to, to possibly pursue a career in that path. What advice would you give to those kids? So my advice to school students is to always focus on the subject of STEM, that is science, engineering, technology and math. Once they are focusing on these subjects, they will be eligible to get a bachelor's degree in one of the majors related to space engineering, such as electrical engineering, mechanical, electronics, astrology, physics, and many more. And once they get a bachelor's degree, then they are eligible to get a master's degree in space engineering. Another advice I will give to school students is that they need to enhance their soft skills. Soft skills are related to teamwork, related to negotiations, related to uh, working under pressure, time management. These are extremely important once they are working in a satellite building project. Brilliant. And now you've, you've amassed this brilliant portfolio so far. Um, what, how do you hope to build on your success? Uh, my plan is to always utilize my knowledge and experience in completing the National Space Science Agency's projects. Also, I'm really interested in nationalizing space system technologies in the kingdom, that is hardware or software, uh, and technologies that are actually used to explore the universe, such as technologies are used to explore the moon, Mars, and even beyond. Also, I'm really interested in publishing scientific research, and for this year alone, I have managed to publish nine research papers, and I'm hoping for the next year to even publish more. Well, that's brilliant. You clearly have a lot keeping you busy and you've got a lot of success to ride on and I hope you continue writing that on into the future. I, I, I can't wait to see what happens next with yourself and other promising youth in Bahrain, particularly in the space sector. Thank you. Thank you. So viewers, as you can see, there's a lot going on in the Bahraini space sector. So don't go away and we'll be right back with more. Hundreds of neem trees were recently planted by members of the Dawoodi Bohra community in Bahrain at the Citra walkway with the support of the capital municipality. This initiative is part of the Dawoodi Bohra community's global tree planting drive in honor of Sultan Al Bohra Sayyidna Mufaddal Saifuddin's 80th birthday. And to talk more about that, we are pleased to be joined here at the studio by representatives of Jamiyat Al Bohra Al Islamiyah, Munira Shafiq, and Abbas Zakiuddin. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you for having us here. It's a pleasure to have you guys. Now, I'd like to start by asking you, Munira, uh, what can you tell us about the tree planting initiative and its importance to protecting the environment? His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's recognition for importance of protecting environmental environmental protection regionally globally and nationally tell us tell us the importance of protecting the environment we are very grateful to the government of Bahrain for providing us this opportunity in the in the leadership of his royal highness crown prince and prime minister prince salman bin hamad al khalifa for giving us this opportunity to contribute to the country's environmental goals. And with the support of Capital Municipality, we could plant hundreds of neem trees on Citra Walkway last week, and we look forward to contribute even more in future. This initiative was also a part of our global tree planting campaign in honor of Sultan Al Bora, Sayyid Namafadal Saifuddin's 80th birthday who is also very passionate about saving the environment. Uh, with this, we pledge to play our role in helping Bahrain to reach carbon neutrality by 2060. 
Beautiful, that's a very noble goal and very relevant in today's world, you know, environmental issues are um, gaining a lot of traction right, rightfully so. And it's nice to see your community taking such an active role in, in kind of in participating in that. Uh, and now I'd like to ask you a bit about your previous initiatives as well. We do take pride in being a community that is always looking out for environmental and noble causes. In past, we had, plan we had partnered with the Lions Club for a project called Each One Beautify Your Surrounding to plant uh, trees in Salmania Garden. Uh, we regularly take part in all beach cleanup drives across the island. Uh, Bahrain's goal to plant 1.6 million mangrove planting by 2035 is also a very important uh, initiative we are recently working with. And we would like to invite the citizens and residents of Bahrain to join us for these initiatives. Brilliant. And now moving on to you, Abbas, um, there were a number of young people and children who participated in this recent planting of the neem trees. Um, so what is the importance of getting the younger uh, generations involved in environmental initiatives? Quite simply, the young will inherit the earth and all its challenges. Early involvement uh, by youth will make them prepared, educated and dedicated to make them excellent supporters of environment throughout their lives. Young look at the climate change with new perspective. The, mainly the habits formed during youth will be carried forward into adulthood. The youth will be most affected by the climate change, so it is very important to understand their actions now to make their, to make their future shape better. Brilliantly said. Um, and now, Manera, I'd like to ask you, how do you value the support provided to you by the uh, Capital Municipality in this tree uh, planting initiative? We are very grateful to the Capital Municipality and NIAD, the National Initiative for Agriculture Development. In this age of environmental concern, it is heartening to see local communities and administrative bodies come together for a cause of greening our beautiful island. And their support has not only helped us with this tree plantation project, but has also played a vital role in fostering the culture of environmental consciousness within our community and in larger Bahraini population. We deeply value the permissions, resources, and guidance provided by the capital municipality. And as Bahraini residents and citizens, we really appreciate the commitment of government of Bahrain to ensure that the climate considerations are embedded in a country's long-term goals. Thank you so much for that. Now, I'd like to move on to you, Abbas. And, um, you know, first of all, uh, Bahrain was the first country in the Middle East where Dawoodi Bohras um, settled and set up shop uh, back in 1885. Now, I'd like to ask you, how do you value Bahrain's religious f uh, freedom, pluralism, tolerance, and coexistence in, the, in their support of your community? Dawoodi Bohras are proud citizens and residents of Kingdom of Bahrain. The Daudi Bohras arrived here a century ago and they were welcomed by open arms because Bahrain has a long-standing tradition of religious harmony and tolerance. Since then, Daudi Bohras have benefited and enduring its responsibilities as a citizens and residents. The government of Bahrain has assisted, assisted us in establishing businesses here as worldwide we are known as a business community. Bahrain is not only home to Muslims, they are home to Christians, Jews, Sikhs and Baha'i communities. And it's wonderful to see temples, synagogues and churches in Bahrain, which shows the tolerance, religious tolerance of Bahrain. His Majesty King Hamad has the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. So we regularly take part in interfaith dialogues, which, is, which promotes the understanding of different religious groups. Brilliant. And like you said, I mean, we're very lucky here in Bahrain to have a very um, cohesive society, regardless of what your background is, religiously, ethnically. I mean, everybody in Bahrain is free to call themselves at home and, you know, really fit in. All of our diverse communities add up rather than segregate, which I think is always a very 
beautiful thing about this country. Um, now, on that note, I would like to ask you a little bit more. Uh, your your community is very active, so Abbas, I'd like to I'd like you to tell us a little bit more about your initiatives, including the humanitarian and and the other environmental ones. Daudi Bora communities around the world take part in many initiatives, helping out the most vulnerable members of the society. As part of our global Project Rise initiative, amazing things are happening around the region, including North America, Europe. Australia, Asia, South Asia, and Middle East. With an emphasis on ending poverty and hunger, enhancing education, empowering women, and protecting the environment, we collaborate with local governments and NGOs to make the living standards better for the individuals who require little extra help. In Bahrain, we do drinking water and food packets distribution to labor camps around the year. Also, we collaborate with Capital Governorate to do the food donation drives during Ramadan. Interestingly, all these initiatives are aligned with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which are very, these values are very close to our hearts for many centuries. These all initiatives serve our country and humanity at large and we always believe in giving back to the society brilliantly said and to wrap everything up i mean can you guys tell us a little bit about what um upcoming initiatives you have all year long we take initiatives in preserving our preserving and improving our surroundings we always collaborate with local governments and ngos and one such initiative is underway with injaz bahrain we are part of My Clean Plate Bahrain, which is a national initiative to reduce food waste. We have in our community Dana Committee, which ensures that not a single grain goes into waste. We also have initiatives to fight plastic pollutions, feeding, spare, feeding sparrows. Also, we have various medical camps and educational initiatives which are all ongoing projects. Zero waste is something our Sultan al-Bohra, Sayyidina Mufad al always reminds us in his preachings. To thank you guys so much for joining us. It was really fascinating to learn all of these initiatives and the thought that goes into them, such as, you know, humanitarian causes and environmental ones. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you for having us here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So viewers, stay tuned and we'll be right back with more. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to the finish line. A huge thank you to all of our guests for joining us tonight. And another huge thank you to all of you watching us at home. As always, be sure to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. We love to hear from you. This was Khalid Hidris, and until next time, good night and God bless. Mm -hmm.